Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. We are going on a cruise with Katlia Durigan, Crucero do Sul. On the 17th of July, I was so happy to see my matured growth showing buds coming out of a sheath. I quickly sent out the flamingos and asked everybody that I had registered on my database who owns a Durigan, would you be interested in joining in on a care collab for the 1st of August? So on our cruise today, we are joined by Fernanda Nascimento Orchids and Succulents, Gabriella Carson, and the Orchid Saga, because they happen to have a Durigan as well. Whether it is a Crucero do Sul or whether it is Aquarius or any other named variety of Durigan makes no difference. Mine happens to be a Crucero do Sul. Scheduled for the 1st of August, 17th of July, buds were showing what could go wrong. <laughs> Every day I lifted that curtain to address my orchids and I kept looking as we got closer to the date of the 1st of August and they were still buds and buds and buds and it took forever, making me relatively nervous. So somewhat last minute, I shot the flamingos out again and said, guys, if any of your durigans are in bloom, we will stick with the 1st of August. But if not, my ship is coming in rather, rather slowly. Could we postpone it? So here we are on the 10th of August and ta-da! Finally, so let's get that out of the way. If you see buds ever developing on your durigan, know that you have approximately four weeks for them to completely bloom out. And I say four weeks because one thing is to see the buds in the sheath, that could be a week, and then eventually see them pop out. From the moment you discover your buds, four weeks. They take a very, very long time to complete. So we've got that out of the way. And I want to say thank you very, very much to the channels participating today, that they were all quite happy to postpone by 10 days, which was necessary because these blooms are three days old. But what a wait it was. Very exciting. A first time bloomer for me. I got her in September last year. It was my Floralia order of the year. Finally, I completed a wishlist orchid, a Durigan. She was very, very strong when she came. As you can see, she is a bifoliate, but she was already growing a beautiful new growth last year when she arrived, which helped with the transition excellently because she went straight into Lekka and self-watering. The roots were already growing upon arrival, so there was no question about when and how quickly to get her into my preferred setup. She even tried to throw out a bud. What a trooper, but yes, that was too much to be expected that she would actually bloom within 10 weeks of having arrived. But never mind, blooming size is what we paid for, blooming size is what we got, and now her first blooming with me for immaculate, stupendous, gorgeous blooms. I love wild looking blooms. I like the simplicity in other blooms as well, but these wild looking blooms with the spotting and everything, well, um, this little guy is Catlia Clandier. Another video will come out about this one. That's 25% of a Clandier is in the Durigan. So you have a compact, little bifoliate there in the background because of the Eclandia being in its parentage. And you have all the wild spotting as well because of Eclandia. A great combination because bifoliate Catlias can be enormous and large and leggy. This one isn't. It's about from the base to the top of the maturest growth is about 20, 25 centimeters. And the rhizome as well, the growth habit is all very, very nicely tucked in, neat, there is no legginess or lankiness about this one, and that is making it such a popular hybrid, in my opinion, for collections when you want something striking, wild, and beautiful. So the blooms themselves have an amazing texture. I will not be able to tell you how long they are going to last, but judging by their texture, they're extremely stiff. There's nothing floofy, even the look is floofy. The texture, it is very stiff. It's like having stiff paper in your hands. There is a waxy texture to them, but more of a papery stiffness to them. So there's nothing flimsy about these blooms. Despite all the floofy attributes they would appear to have, 
on site. They're very, very tough blooms. My guess is four weeks, if all goes well, no extreme weather conditions, hot, dry winds that are scalding at 40 degrees temperatures. I should get four weeks out of these blooms. And her first time blooming with me, I've got four blooms, can you believe it? So floriferous, forgiving, another bifoliate that isn't a diva in the best sense of the word, just gorgeous. Her fragrance, she only has a fragrance when the sun is on her. We are on the east side, this is where she lives permanently. And in the mornings when I'm working around my east rack that you can see there in the background, she is very, very obvious in her fragrance. There's nothing like wow about it. It is a Cattleya Rose kind of fragrance, maybe a little bit of a note of dryness towards the end. It's not something that lingers in your nose, it just sort of disappears. If you move away, the fragrance goes away. If you're closer to her, you can really, really appreciate that fragrance. So a Cattleya Rose fragrance with sort of a dry-ish note in the background. So I've already mentioned that we are on the east side. We're actually facing her home right there. That's her forever place when she is not in bloom. And you can see that there's a gap in there, triangle gap right there. That is where she lives when she's not in bloom. And she is now blooming in my blooming alley so I can appreciate her from all angles of the property. In this location on the east side, she gets about seven to eight hours of sunshine. Every day, every day the sun shines. And that is from March all the way up through to November where my night temperatures are still around 13 degrees Celsius. That is my cutoff mark with these top guns, as I call all the orchids that live on the east side. My cutoff mark is 13 degrees Celsius because of my setup. Being LECA and self-watering, I have an evaporative cooling effect that would reduce the temperature of the pot to a few degrees less than the ambient air. So by 13 degrees nights, that is when I would bring her indoors and then she lives in my dining room. Under my blurple lights on the top shelf because I give her a lot of light no matter the season. She has a little bit of freckling on the leaves and that is a sign that the light levels are on point. Freckling on the leaves, you know you've got a freckly little bloom coming. <laughs> so a lot of light for this one, even when she is not growing actively because after all this is now going to stop this beautiful spectacle, she will start on the root production in the pot and that will extend itself all the way up to November. She'll be busy getting all the new roots, which is awesome because then she goes into a kind of a rest phase. Rest, not being a word I like to use a lot because the orchids are always doing something, but a rest phase by definition in my collection is no more fertilizer, flushing on a regular basis, making sure that my microfibers never ever dry out because I do not want to lose the wicking effect of the LECA in the pot. So I always have my microfibers damp, not dripping the way they are now because that would be clearly too much water if the orchid is not absorbing anything because she's not growing, but they, they would be always damp. So how I do that, <laughs> she doesn't care. <laughs> These are now my water roots. <laughs> so how I do that is just to flush her through ever so often during the winter with plain RO water just to maintain the microfibers and not let them dry out. But then eventually, spring, April, May, that is when she starts on her new growth. And that is pretty fast considering how long it takes her to actually bloom. <laughs> It would have been much less stressful if I wasn't planning a care collab, just bloom whenever you're ready. You do you, boo. Good to have you here. But <laughs> yeah, no, her growth goes fast. So by April, May, she is completely in full on growth mode. And that is when the moment I see a new growth just swelling at the base, that is when I'm already throwing in 300 parts per million of fertilizer. And in my case, I do that at 5.8 pH because my LECA measures 8 pH. And I want to reduce the pH in the pot so that as the orchid absorbs the pH that goes in here at 5.8, by the time the roots have it and the wicking and everything grows up, 
I bank on the fact that it'll come out to 6.3, so there's a certain balance of all the nutrients being absorbed. So I do drop my pH quite low, but that is based on the fact that my Lekka is soaking in water that is 8 pH. And for that reason, that is the climate in my pot, and I have to counteract that with the pHing of my nutrient solution. But full on 300 parts per million the minute I see an eye swelling up, and it is go time. I want these structures to be good and strong and be able to hold the weight of these blooms because this is tough stuff right here. The growth itself is arching because of my light training. So basically, she faces away from me. If she is on the stand in the back there, the light source is coming from this angle, full on from the east. So I always have the back of the orchid towards me. Anything where the growth is coming, I have the opposite facing me so that the growth itself then does its thing, grows up and out and into the pot. Space in winter is very limited, so I have to try and keep my orchids compact. I do have a support in my pots for eventualities. Because orchids have been around for a very, very long time, they have a personality of their own and they can surprise you and say, nah, I think the wall is reflecting more light, so I'm just gonna go and stick myself out in that direction. If need be, I would then tie up the orchid and support the growth to pull it back into the pot. I haven't had to do that with this one. I haven't had to do that with the previous growth. The fact that this is supported is still from the potting up from last year. So she has, let's just say, I don't like to use the word, but she has behaved very, very well for the first, not even year that I've taught her. Super, super impressed. And this time, now I'm still fertilizing her. Still, she gets her 300 parts per million. And I will continue to fertilize her at 300 parts per million until the temperatures drop, because by that time, I believe her root system of this growth that is blooming will have established itself and we are ready to go into the dining room, unfortunately, for a couple of months before we get to bring her out again when the temperatures once again steady out to 13 degrees Celsius. And she is then permanently here on the east side until such a time that she blooms again and then she's in my blooming alley. No issues with pests on this one. I had a few millibugs at the beginning when she arrived. A little bit of alcohol here and there took care of that very, very quickly. But no issues. Fuss free for a diva. So maybe I'm not doing her justice by calling her a diva simply because, you know, she's a bifoliate and eee, you always have to be a little bit more cautious with those. But she looks like a diva. She is special. I paid 35 US dollars for her, and that was a blooming size from Floralia straight from Brazil. Acclimating process, no problem. She is blooming according to schedule. Can't ask for anything more, but I can say thank you to Fernanda Nascimento Orchids and Succulents. Thank you also to Gabriele Carson and thank you to the Orchid Saga for joining me, for letting me showcase my Gurigan Crucero do Sul. We have been on a southern cruise with her. <laughs> As I mentioned, my blooming alley. One thing is talking about it. I just wanted to show you what is going on when a little bit of sun hits her. Let the picture speak for itself. <laughs> Describing a bloom doesn't do it justice sometimes. So with a little bit of sun, the bloom takes on a whole different characteristic. So I have two divas currently in bloom next to each other vying for my attention. That's okay, I can distribute that evenly and <laughs> I have no problem. They are not in competition with each other. Thank you everybody so very much for watching. I hope that this video was helpful. If you found this video because you we are looking to see how to take care of a durigan and if you're still doubting whether to get it or not get it, ask away in the comments below. Let me know how I can convince you that this is a must have. Any durigan. The more the better. <laughs> have yourselves a wonderful day everybody. I appreciate your time very very much. I hope to see you in the next video. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.